Okay, in this video, we're going to learn how to create a commercial grade construction detail. What you see right here in front of you is a K joist with a masonry building. We have a retaining wall because there's uh, some earth built up around the structure on the north side to help shelter it and insulate it on the first level. This is a slab on grade foundation with a uh, running uh, footing underneath a foundation wall. And looking in, I've detailed out uh, some rigid insulation on the inside, steel framing, gypsum wall board, uh, and then here we have our actual um, gravel, sand, and building pad with rebar. And then up on top, stacked on top, bearing plate with a K joist. And then here we have our corrugated metal decking. Here we have our concrete. And then this is a tiled uh, concrete floor. So uh, on top of the concrete, we have a screed with tile, a little bit of base. And then on top, J-bolt anchoring down uh, the K joist. And then we have some CMU carrying up along the rest of the building with some rigid insulation. And then we have our brick facade. I am not showing the grout lines right now. And then we have uh, some brick ties every two feet going up tied into the CMU through the insulation. And at the very top, very similar in detail, uh, we have a J-bolt embedded into a uh, running bond of CMU, which you would want at any time that you want to anchor in to the CMU wall. Uh, so that's also below. And then a filled in CMU on top with our same kind of system. But here we have a green roof. Uh, so there's a drainage mat with the insulation and then concrete uh, as well below and then a parapet wall, kind of same thing, capped out at the top. Uh, what you could do is carve in a couple drip edges on here, uh, which would just be a little bit of uh, like a void that you can cut up into it. So that way when water runs down, it doesn't want to carry over and through onto the brick. It would run down and where it goes up, gravity would then force the water to drip because water cannot then run back upstream before it gets onto this next surface. So that's how the drip edge works. It's just kind of a mechanical way to control where water drips. All right, let's get into how to actually create this detail. So going through, I'm gonna open up a new project and we'll detail this out in a new project. Um, this one in 3D, just so you can see it, uh, kind of came from a section through the building on this end. Whereas uh, the other ones, um, and this, is, this design has since changed on the front. Um, but if we're gonna go through just real quick, it came from a section through the building and then we create a call out, uh, which you're about to see, that then focused on just this region. Okay, let's do it. So I'm gonna close out this view. I'm gonna close out this view. I'm gonna close out this view in this project. And we're just gonna say, nah. All right, so now I've made a section of a building that I wanna show. It has a column supporting this kind of cantilever out. It's not really a cantilever because it is resting on columns, but there's a, a third floor deck that comes out from the building and then there's a giant curtain wall that runs down to a couple footings. So to see that in 3D, this is modeled uh, after the Fitness Formula Club uh, building that uh, I'm investigating its structure and 3D framing of this building kind of looks like so. And so we're just kind of looking at this section right here and uh, this, this roof here I should hide as well. There we go. All right, so we have this framing that's being investigated. Going to level one floor plan, drew a section through the building here. And then we're going to go to that section, section one, create a call out over on the side. And with that call out on the side, we landed in this location. So you can see that we're kind of looking at column six, uh, that axis that that's on in the grid, and that there's an I-beam here, and that we have a curtain wall tied up to our floor uh, deck that's sticking out over here. And we're gonna use all this as references. Okay. Most of what we do is gonna be under the annotate panel, and we're gonna be doing some detail components. So we have components here. I do want to show that I have a solid base here. So we're gonna start at the base and it's gonna be a slab on grade. So I have this foundation wall. Uh, under view, we can do a cut profile 
And this allows us to select our element. And this is only going to show up in this 2D view. It doesn't change our 3D model. But basically what I can do is go from yellow line to yellow line, hit escape, and hit escape again. Click on the arrow to say that I want to keep this part of it. And so we're going to cut out and key in our foundation for our floor slab to sit on top of it. The other thing I could have done is if I don't want to key in to this foundation wall, I could do the opposite. I could carve out this floor so that way it doesn't overlap my foundation wall. So you have two options. So this is one where I have my floor slab now kind of sitting right on top of my foundation wall. I'm going to go over to my floor slab and if I show this view in fine detail, we can see that we have, first of all, some like really high detail on these mullions. Um, we can see that we have some layers being shown here on the metal deck and the different heights in the concrete slab and the I-beam. So I'm going to show these details, um, but it's not necessary to show them all. You can see up here, you can kind of see my layers. We're going to use these as guidelines, but we might not show all of it. And here on my floor slab, I just have a generic floor, which isn't very helpful. But what is nice is that it, it is made to be about the thickness that I planned this to be. So I'm going to do four inches of compact gravel. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to do two inches of sand. And I'm going to do about four inches of, uh, I'm sorry, about six inches of concrete. And then below that, I can add in uh, some other things as well, like a vapor barrier or insulation if you'd like. So going through here. I'm going to go up to my annotate and I can fill in some regions or I could run through some components. So I'm going to do a region, filled region. And what I can do here is just draw out a rectangle, kind of filling in the hatching pattern that I want. And so right here I see four inches. I'm just going to go down until it says two inches. I'm going to do two inches of sand right there. And actually, this pad, uh, yeah, it's just sitting on grade, so yeah, it's good. If you were going to do this as like a cross bed or basement, you would throw it right above the footing, right? This one is just sitting right on grade, so it's not going any deeper into the earth. So I'm going to just say, all right, that's all I want. So I'm going to say finish that. And now if I click on this actual one, we can see that our hatching patterns are right here. And we could say edit type say duplicate and we can call this sand and we can go into our fill pattern three dots and go and we could find our sand and we're going to choose like a dense compacted sand say okay so there's our sand layer and then on top of that I actually don't like how this is cutting in like this for this composition so I'm going to uh, change this as well and we'll change that I think after I'm done with this. No, we should do it now. My apologies, so I'm just gonna go in here and um, not edit the profile. View, cut profile, we'll click on this one. work if I send it out let's see cut profile of this guy and we'll drag that in Cool, now you got to see how I edited that. We'll eventually drag this in two inches more. So we actually could say eight inches. Okay, so now I have my sand separated from my foundation wall. I do realize that you could also just edit this floor slab's location, um, but this is just one way to just do it in our detail. So going through, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go up to our uh, annotation tab. We're gonna go to region. And we're going to draw in about four inches, which we can always adjust it in the dimensions here after we click. And we can then check that off. And going in, we're going to edit the type. Now, 
we can always check to see if we have loaded in what we need. If not, we say edit type, duplicate, and then let's name it. I'm going to turn off my caps locks. And we're going to call this gravel. Now, in order to get the gravel, I had to download a .pat file. And that is a file that you can find on a lot of Revit forums that has a hatching pattern kind of already made for you that you can load. So I'm going to load in a hatching pattern. So I've downloaded it already. So I, I have my three dots to search. I'm going to say new. And we're going to say a custom. And we're going to then browse. And I have mine already saved. So I'm going to start to browse over on my computer to where that is saved at. So just bear with me just a moment here. And so I have some miscellaneous resources folder for architecture in general, and I have some two different gravel patterns that are PAT files. And once again, you can find that on the Revit form. I'm gonna say, okay. And now that I have this, I'm going to also just dial down the scale a little bit. Um, I can't remember what I liked before. So I'm just gonna say 0.5 for right now and say, okay. Now I have this gravel loaded into my project that I have uh, available. I'm gonna say okay. And I'm gonna say okay. And it's still kind of big. So I'm gonna dial that down a little bit more. So I'm gonna say edit type. And clicking into the gravel. I have to make a new one again. And custom browse gravel open. I'm going to call this gravel, but I'm going to call it, I think it was like, man, what did I use, like 0.1 even? So I'm just going to call it gravel 0.1. And we're just going to make this really tiny and say OK. And OK. Apply. And OK. There we go. So now I have the gravel pattern that I like. And now from here, we're going to import some other things using, uh, we could keep using the region. Um, and then I'm going to throw in my installation with a different technique. So I could go and draw out my square as well. So if I just go up just to show it a different way, I'm going to draw out that region and then check it off. And then with this one, we could go down and I'm just like really surprised that concrete's not a default item. So once again, edit type, we're going to duplicate, we're going to call it conk for concrete. And then we're going to go over here to find our concrete hatch. There it is. Say OK and OK. So now we have concrete, gravel, sand. Then this region I left open for kind of an expansion joint between the two. And we're going to fill that with rigid foam. So we don't want to throw down bat insulation in here. right? This won't look right. This is not good. Bat insulation doesn't handle water well. So what we want to do is throw down some EPS, extruded polystyrene, uh, that if it's closed cell foam, then it's going to be able to handle, handle water just fine. Um, so we're going to go in and as a component, let's load that in. So detail component, load family, and we're going to find our extruded polystyrene. So I'm going to go to my detail items folder, and then from here, thermal and moisture protection. And from there, we're going to go to thermal insulation, roof and deck insulation. And this is our rigid insulation. This is EPS um, extruded polystyrene. So we're going to load that in. And then we have some different widths that we can choose. Here I left two inches for it, so I'm going to do two inches. And I'm just going to drag that up. And it's not a big deal if I want a little bit big, because I can just go and move that over, snap it in place. Phew, just like so. And if I really wanted to, I could drop that all the way down and line my foundation wall like that if I if I thought it was necessary. Once again, probably would do that more so if it was a basement. Um, if I want to help stop transfer of, uh, you know, thawing, uh, freeze thaw cycles through my building, maybe this helps waterproof it. I'm going to apply probably a damp proofing on this side of the concrete wall anyways. Um, so if I were to edit the type of this, I could edit the structure and I could just add a layer on the exterior side that says damp proofing. Um, I could do that as well.
I could also call that out. That would just be a, a really like paper thin layer on the outside. Okay, so I have this, this installation acts as a uh, expansion joint. Okay, now I do have on this, in this building, there's a vinyl floor, vinyl tile. And so I could add some layers there. And to do that, well, I could go and throw down a repeating detail component. And with this repeating detail component, once again, edit type, uh, duplicate, and let's call this components uh, vinyl flooring. And I always misspell vinyl. I think it's V-I-N-Y-L. <laughs> you might want to Google it. <laughs> because uh, it could be V-Y-N-I-L, but I think it's V-I-N-Y-L. Okay, I always mix up the I and the Y. Now going through detail then, we have some different things that are already loaded into uh, this project from other items that I have loaded in. If we don't find what we need here under this item, I actually have to go first. So I'm gonna say, okay, I actually have to go first and load in that, otherwise I have brick as my vinyl flooring. So I have to load a component that is vinyl flooring before I use the detail component, uh, repeating component. So let's load in what we need, load family. Once again, we're looking at detail items and I'm gonna check under finishes here. Here we go, flooring. And we see wood flooring. I don't know, let's see, what's resilient? Uh, whatever. I'm going to go to wood flooring and if we do strip section, that's fine. I'm just going to call it out as being vinyl. Um, we also do need like some kind of underlayment underneath that. So I'll leave a little bit of room for a mat, like a, a cork mat, let's say, or something that could handle moisture. And if I click uh, in on here, I could make the first item, but all we really needed to do was load this component and delete it. So that way we can do a repeating component. Um, so if I go to component repeating detail components, and then I'm going to edit this vinyl flooring, and I'm going to change it to the actual profile of our wood flooring. And what do we want? I'll do a little one by four and say apply and OK. Um, then I can go and click in, and they're all going up right now, so we have to edit that again. Edit type. Let's do a little rotation. So I'm going to go clockwise rotation, apply OK, throw that on, beauty. We're just gonna run that through and now I have that, that detail that I need for my finished floor. However, keep in mind with flooring, we do need to have a little bit of an underlayment. So I'm just gonna use my arrow keys, notice that up real quick and let's throw down, I like to use region as you can see for some of these strips, um, but we could just do like a cork board underlayment. And so I'm just gonna go three quarter up run that over. You might want to look into your uh, project and just double check um, like what that material might actually end up being thickness wise before you just go and randomly do a three quarter. And so here I have my three quarter thick uh, hatch. I can call this out to be whatever I want it to be. Um, I can also do you know whatever um, hatch pattern I want to do for this as well. So I'm going to just say edit type and duplicate this. We're just going to call this cork. Uh, or we can just call it underlayment if we want to keep it pretty generic uh, in case we're not really picky on what materials we're going to use. And then I don't want to do any kind of like too crazy of a hatch. I like the idea of maybe doing a hatch like this for this cork underlayment and say OK. And the scale on this is a, a little bit a little bit large so if we go back under here and here we could say all right we're gonna do a diagonal hatch but we could change up how that looks um, by just scaling it so I could do new and then we could do a custom and we could search for I don't know if it'll come up I have to browse under like where it currently is or what we could do is Click on that, duplicate it, and I do want to try and scale that down a bit. We could change this line spacing. So if we want to change that to like every 30 seconds or even 64th, 
we can get this thing to be pretty tiny of a scale just like so and say OK and OK and apply and OK and there we go we've we've done it and now that we're in here um, we could also recognize that my scale right now is still quarter inch because um, I'm doing a whole wall section uh, you might actually change that to like half inch and let's just see how that affects you know all of our items here you know, it's showing a little bit differently um, you have to maybe see what fits on your page first before getting a little too crazy into this I'm gonna keep it at half inch right now um, sometimes three quarter is a good way to show your sections it just kinda depends all right, and then I have this mullion here sitting on this foundation. Um, I wouldn't do it like that exactly. Unpin it. We could move this thing up a little bit. And we could throw it up on like a block. Now this isn't really moving very easily, and this is a pretty high level of detail that I would maybe show in a detail view based on this callout. Um, also, I'd have to adjust, I think, basically the whole uh, curtain wall systems like base height to get this to sit this detail part to sit correctly and that's just a level of detail I don't think I want to show in this view so if I want to I could take that and just hide this element and we'll deal with that later what I might want to just show is where this lands and how it sits on top of this foundation wall So taking a second to think here, I do know that I have columns that this curtain wall is tied to and a floor deck that it could be tied to as well. And looking at the structure of where I currently am, you can see that my columns are actually going to be about three feet back in the structure and then coming out from them are some I-beams that then would actually align and tie and I could have a bar going across here to then tie those in. I also could just say, all right, my slab is gonna have the anchorage to attach my curtain wall on here. So this is gonna be attached like so. So going back to my call out, I have an understanding of what I wanna do here. I could throw my column in back here and then show that this is, uh, a wide flange beam coming out with a floor deck on here with concrete and then we can have our, our angle iron attached to the concrete that then is attached to my mullion. So I'm going to keep the mullion kind of just like so. Down here at the bottom, this is where I'm not completely satisfied with the detail but I can come back and figure that out later. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to move on to up here and over here we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take this uh, metal deck. We're going to throw in a component that we're going to load in first. So I'm going to load family. I'm going to go up to my decking here. It's a detail item. And I think this is going to be under, it might be under concrete, it might be under steel. Hmm. I have a feeling it's not going to be under concrete. It's going to be under steel. Metals. Steel decking. And then I want this section. I'm going to say open. Here, I know I want it to be about two inches tall. Let's see how this comes in. It's about the height I want. about what I want. Alright, so I have this decking and I'm going to use that as a repeating component. So component, repeating detail component. I have to edit type and duplicate. We're going to call this seal decking. And what's kind of cool is this layout. I can say fill available space. Whoa, come on. 
the available space. I don't want to rotate it this time. It remembers your settings from before. And we're going to say OK. Oh, we need to change that to our decking. And which one did I like? It was one of the 2.0s. And we're just going to say OK. And then we can, we're going to go through and... Oh, I do need to rotate it. So edit type on that and rotate. We're going to say clockwise. And as we move through, just need to run it past. So it's sitting right on top of our wide flange beam. Um, we could throw in, there should be like rivets, um, some stud anchors going through here to help create a continuous bond between this concrete and this deck. Um, we could get to that level of detail or that could be done on a call out. And then now I want to show this concrete deck actually going all the way down here and into this. So this is the part where I know like this reference line is the top of this concrete. And so I'm going to hide this floor deck. And I'm just going to model my concrete on top of here now. And I'm going to go to our region. And this is where all of our hard work is paying off. So we're going to go up to conk for concrete. And I could click around here, which is kind of a pain, but I could do that. Or I could do a masking region through here. And so just to show a different skill, I'm going to show uh, Matt asking region as a way to carve out some things that you might not want to show. So I have this deck on here and there's actually an angle iron that they use right here uh, to cap this off. So I'll model that too. Um, but I have my concrete right here and then I'm going to create a masking region around this. I also want to bring this to the front just to make sure it's in front of the concrete. And I'll have to probably do it again after masking region. I clicked on that rather quick, so let me show you. I'm going to go to region, masking region, and I'm going to just go through and click. You could do pick lines. Sometimes that works well. Sometimes that works worse. So I'm going to make a masking region, and I'm going to just get this thing pretty nice and close. My steel decking will eventually be in front of this, so I don't have to make it perfect. So I have that. I'm just going to say, yeah, let's check that off. So now I have that hidden. And then what I can do here is just do a little copy or an array, whatever you want to do on that. Um, so that's that's copy. Uh, an array would be you click on that, you could do an array tool, and you could just say we're going to do a linear. Um, we could do one, two, three, so we could say there's three of them. And then I can say I'm going to show you where the second one is, and I'm going to say the first one starts here, and then the second one starts over here. And yeah, three, one, two, three is what we want. And then we could just say enter and okay. And that's a masking region. So that goes through, pretty cool. Um, once again, click on this deck, bring to front. All right, so we have a masking region. Oh, I don't like this concrete going in front. So I'm gonna click on that concrete and we're gonna say send it back. Okay, now we have that detailed out. I'm gonna go through and add in a piece of angle iron. This helps make sure that this concrete doesn't spill over when they pour it. So they kind of create like this bed, this frame between this uh, decking and this angle iron that's going to be on here. And uh, I would assume the angle iron kind of under underlaps, this, this decking overlaps it. Um, however, I'm, I'm not entirely sure how that works out. Uh, I'm going to insert that as a component. So detail component, load family. I think it's like a, a six inch angle iron. So I'm going to go up from metals. Hopefully I can find... It under structural steel framing, question mark, going through, looking at. Okay, we have some angled shapes. I do know I want a section of it. Um, I think it's just right at the top. It's what I wanted. Angle. Say open. And I do want to choose a six... By six, three eighths looks good. Could even go a little lighter than that, most likely. Say OK. And hit spacebar to rotate. And this guy just kind of sits just like that. 
and I'm gonna hit escape. And this kind of caps off the concrete, and then what they have is some aluminum capping that just kind of goes up and over this. This provides an area for our finished floor to bump up, bump up against as well. And so now that I have that done, I, I like this wall to be hidden here in the background, so hide in view. Cool. And now up over here, we can go and start to detail out like a nice connection to our curtain wall and then finished floor. I'm going to save this. And now I'm going to go up to my component. Now this, this floor here also is just like this one. So we're going to do a little shortcut. We're going to just highlight all that. And we're going to say control C to copy, control V to paste, and we're going to bring it up. I like to bring it a little bit higher than we need, and then I'm going to use the move arrows to control where that lands. And so I'm just going to bring that kind of over here, and I do want to bring it actually like right over here. And I just realized we never brought this down. So we're going to bring that down in both views. And with this deck, we might actually want to choose like an 8 inch angle iron. So we're not going to have a floating, literally a floating floor. Bad joke. Um, we're going to throw that down. Let's change this to an 8. I might have to load that in again. So we're going to components, load family, angled shapes, look at our catalog. Choose a lighter 8x8. You can see this one comes in half inch as the lightest. That's okay. Choose that. Spin it around. Throw it in. Choose that to be an 8x8. Delete. There we go. All right. So now we have that. And this it is protruding about this much in the uh, in the building. And I could, you know, cap that in a little bit more if I want. Okay, uh, this deck is coming out. Bring that in too. All right, so we have that detailed. And then we do need to throw in a bracket. We could do this with just detail line if we would like. Um, we could also just throw in another detail component for that. If we want to do like our own custom thing here, we could do a little masking region on this. And we could just say like, all right, we're going to have like an area here that we want to draw over so why not that's an inch and a half down draw over here and then we could say all right we're going to take those lines hold down shift minus this middle one minus that middle one we could mirror that over this hit escape delete out this part of the region and then check that off and actually uh Drag that over. Now we've kind of created this uh, whoop, this bridge. Now this masking region, we can see our, that we have a, a boundary on that. It's like these lines here. We want to change those to invisible lines, not to be confused with hidden. So invisible lines, check. Now we've created this gap that we can draw between. I don't really know how big these uh, pieces are supposed to be between the steel and the aluminum. And I also don't know uh, if there has to be like a plastic spacer or something. If these are going to be aluminum, then um, we, we can't have two different metals, dissimilar metals touching each other. Uh, so you'd have to have some kind of spacer or something if it's steel to aluminum, maybe a me uh, plastic spacer. So I'm going to go through and draw in my own plate here. And I'm going to just do a nice thin line here. We'll just go and draw that through and in, just like so. Hit escape, drag that out, seven and a half, maybe a little bit bigger. Let's just say nine. So we have some kind of plate here that would be holding that on to the I-beam. Uh, we could also just say, I think before I'll say, we could anchor it into the deck. I think this is just fine. 
And then if we want to show that it's like bolted, welded, whatever, we can call that out. If we're going to do bolted, we could throw in some bolts. If we want to say welded, we call that out with the tag on our detail. So we have that holding up our curtain wall uh, track. And then going up to the actual top here, this floor deck. Um, once again, if I'm not showing this level of detail on here, I can hide that. Hide in view element. Uh, and then once again, I need to address this curtain wall a little bit differently. I think I would have it bump to the I beam. And so I could do a masking region again. Uh, I could also click on this guy and kind of just redraw it over the whole thing. Um, over here, I see that I have my, my ceiling that will end up coming down from here. So I have a soffit to draw out. And then here, what we have? We have our column kind of going and passing through. So I have a lot of like little details to do up here. Um, but essentially what I'm going to end up doing is create, um, my, my roof is be pitched to the other side, back side of the structure, so I don't have to wor worry about water running off here as much. I would create a little bit of a cap, a little channel. This building doesn't have a parapet wall sticking up over this edge. Um, I would end up showing my insulation, tucking in together uh, a facade here, detail out the window. Um, and then I'm going to have some steel studs attached to this to frame out uh, this wall. And for the soffit, and then there's dense glass sheathing with a vapor barrier coming over here. So I'll just draw that as like glass reinforced. Um, gypsum board for dense glass with the Tyvek. So a vapor retarder on the end. And then I think that's going to just be cladded in a uh, like a, almost like a stucco finish. Um, EFIS, basically an EFIS system. Uh, on the outside of that. So going through this, the rest of it, this video is running pretty long, so I'm going to stop it. But if you want to look at another video, I'll make another one where I continue framing this out in the future. So don't forget to save and subscribe if you like this video, if you thought it was valuable on how to go through some construction details. Uh, once again, we're going to make this thing end up polished enough to look like my other project that I was working on. Um, and I'll see y'all later.